now for something completely different. Um, thanks very much, Ivanka, for the invitation. Thanks to you all for being here. Um, I'm really encouraged that you are um, putting interdisciplinarity at a, at a core point in your whole postgraduate week. I think it's really important, and it reflects the new emphasis that there is in funding and in universities about interdisciplinarity. Um, I'm sure in our discussion we may come across uh, and raise some of the tensions that are involved in interdisciplinarity, especially when you're looking to develop your career and wondering where you're going to fit in and being appropriate for, um, for lecturing positions, which tend still to be defined very much within uh, disciplines. Um, but it's great to explore the, the positive aspects of interdisciplinarity to begin with. So just to say, um, I'm speaking from my own experience here, and um, it's very simple and straightforward. My degree was uh, uh, in Peace and Conflict Studies, which is extremely interdisciplinary in McGee. And then my PhD was in Political Science, um, but then I had several postdocs, all very interdisciplinary. interdisciplinary. I'm going to stumble over that word a lot, I think. And, uh, and I'm in sociology, which is a great discipline for being quite inclusive, although it has its moments uh, in terms of uh, uh, drawing boundaries. Um, and I'm involved in several projects, both local and international, that are very much on sort of broad themes. And I think when we're talking about interdisciplinarity, it's very much about relating to the real world. <coughs> And I remember answering a question in one of the interviews I did for a postdoc, and they were saying, you know, what's the value of interdisciplinary research? And I was, it sort of struck me that, well, the, the world is interdisciplinary. Things aren't broken up into disciplines in the real world. So if you're curious about the real world and you want to speak to it uh, from the basis of your research, then be comfortable with um, it interdisciplinary thinking. Now, I'm going to use a mnemonic for this, and there are two risks in doing that apart from the fact you've already seen the, the, what I'm going to say. Uh, one is that I'm stretching the information um, uh, to sort of fit the mnemonic, and the other is that you open yourself up to merciless mockery. So I'm just going to trust that you're not going to stoop that low. Um, <laughs> so tease me on this. So first of all, um, stretch yourself. So specialism is the first thing. What is your specialism? And when you're thinking about this, be aware of the bigger picture. Where does your particular expertise fit in terms of the bigger picture in the real world. Think in particular, particular of policy priorities um, and also of international dimensions. Uh, especially if you're doing a, a PhD, read very widely in your literature review. Make sure you know how that particular problem that you're approaching from your disciplinary perspective is approaching different disciplines. And from that way, at the very beginning, you've got a, uh, a sense of um, uh, familiarity, at the very least, with uh, interdisciplinary uh, perspectives on your particular expertise. Uh, so make your, um, your PhD a launching pad, uh, that then after you've completed it, you can go into different uh, disciplines and indeed into different um, uh, wider thematic areas. Which relates to the next point. Um, so in terms of themes, how do you relate to the big themes? You need to be aware of the key priorities of the European Research Council, of um, RC UK, um, they are touching now on trying to make academia uh, relevant and useful to the big issues that are facing uh, societies and global society. Um, so how does your specialism, or how could it possibly fit into some of these bigger issues, such as sustainability, such as security, such as communications, such as aging? Uh, be aware that these themes um, um, may change over time, but you can be kind of uh, assured that uh, they will be maintained by um, various funding streams, and then be aware of how you could possibly fit into those. Um, in terms of your own research, research quite widely, as I said, right at the beginning, and also uh, the methods of research is increasingly important. I think the emphasis in the future, people may disagree, but will be not so much on the data you gather, but on how you gather it and how you analyse it as well. And research methods and methodology is a good um, forum within which you can sort of uh, work on um, collaboration and on um, <coughs> uh, developing networks and widening your expertise. So think about that particular aspect of your PhD too, where relevant. Um, uh, expand. So uh, extend your expertise um, and also extend uh, the expertise of your contacts. That apostrophe isn't a mistake. Um, so those friends that you get, those networks, even here amongst the, the group of you and, and your fellow PhD students and um, 
uh, other research partners that you know through professional associations, etc. Go do things together that might be stretching you a, a little bit. So, for example, uh, propose a panel at a conference that maybe is uh, multidisciplinary or it's international. Uh, and do these things um, on your own and also together and make sure that you're constantly challenging yourself and stretching yourself. Uh, one way of doing this is by looking at the um, opportunities for seed funding. And seed funding is often relating to setting up a workshop, for example, or a, a conference panel or, or, or a conference. And these are really good opportunities for you to, um, first of all, show that you can get money. And secondly, uh, develop opportunities to bring people in and, and see where their expertise fits with yours, which could then be a launching pad for research projects of your own. Um, take up opportunities and be enthusiastic. And don't, don't think that this will necessarily uh, do you any favours later on in terms of favouritism, uh, but it definitely means that you're well placed to, to know the opportunities that are coming up down the line. So, for example, in a professional association, volunteer to be the postgrad representative or stand for election to be the postgrad rep in your professional association. Um, or, as I say, get, get involved in helping to run conferences or uh, take up the opportunity to, to run a specialist group, for example. Um, and uh, again, all these steps will generally be stretching your expertise, but that's a good thing because that opens you up for more opportunities down the line. Um, collaborate, first of all, within your disciplines, particularly if you're comfortable, if you, if you, if you do have an expertise, it's particularly within your discipline. So use your professional association, uh, become familiar in your, your local or national conferences in your discipline, and then use that for finding people within your uh, particular, that, that have re relevant expertise in relation to your particular interests and broaden out from there. And then you can go and develop international contacts um, through uh, your discipline, as I mentioned, partly through setting up panels at international conferences, for example. <coughs> And finally, think about your discipline as a platform. So don't think about it as like, um, uh, like a, a raft or an, an island that you're sort of set adrift on and you're sort of destined to stay on that for the rest of your career. It's very much like a platform as part of a scaffold that can link into to other disciplines. Um, and as I say, if you're very clear at the very beginning about how your specialism relates to the bigger themes and issues um, in, in wider social science or humanities research, then that sets you in a good position for linking in with um, other researchers in different universities and in different countries as well. Um, <coughs> so to conclude, uh, interdisciplinarity is not easy. There is a sort of paradox of it being very much encouraged at the moment, but it's also uh, difficult when it comes to, it has certain challenges when it comes to uh, uh, getting a job. Um, and I know there's some personal experience, but I would say that uh, what being interdisciplinary gets you is what people are looking for when they're giving academic jobs on the whole. So that is, you have good contacts, you get publications, you get, um, uh, you show your, uh, how active you, were in you are in terms of collaboration, uh, those international networks that it gets you. And of course, it also gives you an opportunity for more impact is that awful word. So if you're confident in your specialism and how it relates to the real world, uh, from an interdisciplinary perspective, that gives you opportunity to link in with community organisations um, and indeed to influence ultimately perhaps um, some sort of uh, policy making or what have you. And again, this is what universities are now looking for, all of which is just um, crying out for more interdisciplinarity. Thank you, Thank you very much.